Everson Griffin reached an urgent point this weekend. Teammates were alarmed to hear that he had gone to the hospital. All of our thoughts and prayers are with him. We all just, you know, hope that everything turns on to positive matter. We just want to know that he's all right. The situation seems to qualify as a mental health emergency. Dr. Kaz Nelson of the U Psychiatry Department has seen this before. This is not uncommon. You're not alone, and there are resources to help support people in the midst of these crises. Most counties have crisis lines and can deploy mobile teams. Once at the hospital, state law allows people to be held up to 72 hours if they're deemed a threat. After that, medical professionals can petition the county to get them civilly committed. That process requires a hearing within two weeks. We can't keep anybody against their will unless there's a concern that they may be in danger of themselves or others or really not be able to care for themselves. In Griffin's case, the police report indicated he voluntarily went to the hospital. The report also says the team and family members had worried about Griffin's mental state for weeks. Here in Minnesota, or any other state in the country for that matter, there can be significant barriers to getting into mental health treatment. We do have a long list of improvements that we would want to see because currently our mental health safety net is fragmented. For example, insurance doesn't always cover mental health services. Wait times for treatment can be long. And there are even situations where people try to get help but can't, like this summer in Chanhassen. The family of 16-year-old Archer Amorosi said they called a crisis line the day before police shot and killed him. We have a ways to go in building an excellent mental health system, but that doesn't mean that there's nothing someone can do. Stanley Spiewak reporting. We asked the Vikings for an update on Griffin's condition today, but a team spokesperson said he had nothing new to report.